welcome to the Food for Your Soul Ministry. Uh, my name is Bishop Ron C. Hill, sitting next to my wife, Osa L. Hill, of 52 years. And we thank and praise God for your being with us on today. I want to begin today by reminding you, dear brother and sister, that you are greatly loved by God. And it is very, very important that you know that God doesn't love anybody more than he loves you. And that he has a perfect plan for your life. And if you use the weapons that he's given you, he's given you the law of faith, the law of hope, and the law of love. And I promise you that if you will learn how to walk by faith, how to walk in hope, and how to walk in the love of God, everything will turn out fine in your life. Or you will be challenged. The devil is going to come after you. People will hate you. All kind of things will happen to you. But remember, greater is he who's inside of you than he that is in the world. By faith, you already have the victory. You have the victory over sin. You have the victory over Satan. And you can use your faith to walk it out. We don't secure the victory. The victory has already been given to us. In fact, the Bible says these words, Thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When Jesus the Christ suffered and bled and died on that cross mm. and rose again on the third day, he gave us the victory. And when I say us, I'm talking about anybody who believed the gospel. Mm. To believe the gospel is a wonderful thing. I was meditating the other day, and it came to me. You preach this gospel to some people, and they believe it right away. You preach it to others, and they disbelieve it. I don't understand why. Some people believe, and some don't. I believe it. What about you? And if you do believe it, may I urge you to take full advantage of it. And in order to take full advantage of believing the gospel, you simply have to read the word, study the word, mm -hmm. memorize the word, meditate in the word, and trust and obey the word. It's just that simple. Yes. It's just that simple. Obey the word of God. You don't need to have a PhD from some theological seminary. You need to study the word and obey the word of God. And yes, listen to your minister. Some men are very erudite. They can give you the Greek and the Hebrew and, and, and all that. And that's good. That's good. But at the end of the day, it's going to be your personal uh, encounter with God. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost has to reveal to us that Jesus is Lord. You can't, you can't know that Jesus is Lord through your intellect. The Holy Ghost is the only one who can reveal Christ to us. And if you have been so privileged to have him to have done that for you, consider yourself blessed. But you got to renew your mind so that you can make a biblical decision a spiritual, biblical decision to, to obey God. And trust me, everybody who obeys God, they get the Holy Ghost. The Bible says if you obey him, he'll give you the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost is to give you power to live holy. The people who claim to be full of the Holy Ghost, while they are sinning, are delusional. They're operating in deception. But when you know that you've been redeemed by the Holy Blood, that you've been regenerated by the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. that you've been brought into the Holy Body of Christ, you've been instructed to obey the Holy Word. Holy plus holy does not equal sin. And that's the problem in the American church. We have too many sinners in the pulpits, too many sinners in the pew, claiming that they're saved by grace while they're sinning. You need to know that the same grace that saves you can keep you by yes. faith if you desire to be kept, and I don't want to preach all day, Mother Hill, how you doing? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to feed you because I want you to pay my pay for my meal tonight. All right. <laughs> you, 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 you holding any money today? Uh, yeah, I'm holding your money. <laughs> Boy, there we go. There we go. You know, people, she's laughing at me because years ago, <laughs> years ago, I'd get my little money, I'd get my little check, and I'd go place, give all the money away. And one day I came home, and she said, when are we going to this place? I said, oh, oh, sir, I gave all the money. She said, I'm tired of this. She said, now you bring your check home. I said, yes, ma'am. 
And that's been how long? Thirty years ago? Yeah, probably more than that. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I learned but, that lesson real quick. But I, you know, I have more money than because I was just giving it all away. Yeah. I just yeah, just give it away. But you you said I'm not going for that anymore. So uh, but you did promise me that Okay, Ron, I'm going to take a check, but when we go out to eat, I'll pay. But sometimes yeah. you ain't paying right now. That's right. That's right, because you want to do it. <laughs> oh, I want, I want to spend my money. I don't want to take the pleasure. <laughs> All right, Mother. All right. Your desire to Okay, we'll give. discuss this later. <laughs> What's on you? You got a word on All your right. day? You just Let me read a, uh, one of our letters okay. on today, and maybe in our next session I'll share. Okay. All right. Uh, good morning. As I write you this note, enclosed you will find a money order for my tithes. I love your teaching and preaching. You're a true man of God. There need to be more, just like you. You love people, and it shows. And it causes people to want to hear you mm -hmm. because they know you are telling them only for their good. And that's good. Yeah. Praise that, God. That it's for their good. Yeah. yeah I love Amen. people. Amen. Sometimes it's not a pleasant word all the time, <laughs> but it, it's a good word because yeah. it comes out of the word of God. Yes. And the word of God is refreshing. Yes. Amen. We live by that word, trust that word, and it builds us up. Yes. It builds us up in our faith. Right. Because we need the word of God to encourage us to live holy and to be all that God wants us to be and that we we can be because we represent him. He so loved the world that he gave and we so love the world that we're able to give, yes. not grudgingly. Right. We don't grudgingly we're really give, we're, happy to give. We're yeah. happy to give of our resources. Cheerful. Cheerful. We're happy to give of our time and right. our energy right. because God has been so good to us and it's built within us to have a giving spirit, and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, you know, you know, one of the things that drives me as much as anything in my life What's that? is when I think about eternity. That's true. Um, it, life is more than just down here. Mm -hmm. You know, thank God for those who are rich and yeah. famous, and, that, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. I, I don't begrudge that, but everybody's going to die. That's right. Everybody's going to die, and when, when your loved ones die, Either they're going to spend eternity mm. in the presence of God, or mm -hmm. they're going to be burning in hell. That's it. And, and, and today, we seldom hear anybody warning people about the agony of eternal damnation. That's right. Do you not know if somebody dies and they don't know Christ as Savior, eventually they're going to be plunged in the hell fire? Does that concern you, brother preacher? What about you, sister preacher? Are you concerned about where your loved ones are going. Uh, uh, some years ago, some years ago, I was fasting and praying about something. And, and God said to me, he said, run. You say you love O.C. You say you love the children. You say you love the people at the church. He said, one of the best ways you can express your love for, the, for, for those uh, persons mm -hmm. is, is by your living holy. That's it. He said, if you live holy and love everybody, and give the word of God at that point, there isn't anything else you can do. Mm -hmm. And 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 and, and I, was, I will say to you, if you really love me, mm -hmm. the, the greatest favor you can do for me is to obey God. Mm -hmm. Because the effectual fervent prayer mm -hmm. of what kind of person? Oh righteous. What does it do? A villain. A villain. So so live holy OC mm -hmm. and pray for us and pray for mm -hmm. me and our kids. And, yes. and if I do it and and you're doing it, mm -hmm. Our kids have the best opportunity to go to heaven. That's true. And the people we pastor and the people that's we minister true. to here. Yes. So that's so true. that's I, I'm driven by that. I'm driven by that, by the fact that I want to see people saved mm -hmm. and sanctified mm -hmm. and baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I want to see people living holy and walking in the love of God. And the primary motivation has to be the glorification of God. Mm -hmm. And secondly to be able to share a clear presentation of the gospel with sinners. That's to it. give people the chance. That's true. And so that's where we are. So we love you today. Now, now we're going to go to the recorded message, and I trust you'll enjoy. For the Son of Man has come. What did he come to do? To seek and to save. So he didn't come just to give you a big house and a car. 
he didn't come just to pay your bills. No, the Son of Man, Jesus the Christ, born of the Virgin Mary, came to seek our people to save them from their sins. But the average church person is not driven by this. The average church person they could care less about people getting saved or not. They're so busy trying to get a blessing, they don't care about nobody but themselves. Average. Turn your neighbor and say average. average. Praise God, I'm right today. St. John, John chapter 3, verse 14. God, I hope I can get all this in today. St. John chapter 3, verse number 14. Verse, um, yeah, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, what is that about? The people of God had begun to complain against God and Moses, and God released snakes in their midst. And those snakes began to bite people, and they were dying. And they went to Moses and said, Moses, uh, appealed for us and, and God told Moses to take a serpent and put it up on a pole and whoever would look up at that snake that they would live and not die and the folks who looked up at that snake although they were bitten by a venomous snake that could have killed them instantly because they obeyed and looked up they didn't die watch it now watch it verse 15 that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In other words, we have been bitten by the venomous of sin, the venom of sin, and sin kills. The wedges of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I don't care who it is. If you are in sin, you are operating in death. I don't care what comes out of your mouth. It's what you're doing with your heart and your body. What are you doing with your heart? How, how, what's your attitude? What's your motive? What is your motive? Do you love God? Do you love people? If not, you are in debt. My God today, help me, Holy Ghost. Verse 16. For God, who God, who God? What did God do? He so loved the world. That means he so loved sinners that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, like those folks have been bitten by those snakes, looked up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I don't know about you, but I don't want to die. I want to live forever. I hear somebody say, everybody died. No, everybody don't die. This, this body goes back to the dust, but, but you can live on because you are not just a body. You are a body, soul, and spirit. And when you've been born again, uh, bless this sweet name, Jesus, your body goes back to the dust, but your soul and your spirit lives on infinitum and goes instantly into the presence of God. And I don't know why y'all not excited about that because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Life is like a vapor. It appears for a short time and then it vanishes away. How in the world am I going to be 80 years old if I see September 18th? Where did the time go? It seemed like I had a jump shot last year. But it's all gone. I had black hair, but it's almost all gone. And I want you folks to know, you young folk in here, you think you got a lot of time. You ain't got no whole lot of time. You better get busy for God right now. Because don't wait to get to be an old woman, an old man, and think you're going to get her done. If you're going to get her done, you better get her done today. You better get into the press, brother. You better be like the Apostle Paul who said these words. I press toward the mark of the prize of high calling of God 
in Christ Jesus. I've been pressing a long time. I've been getting ready for the crossover. I, I realize that someday uh, I've got to get out of this body. And when I get out of this body, I want God to be able to tell me, well done, the good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear him telling me, depart from me. I never knew you. If I don't know you, God, I want to meet you right now. Because I ain't trying to go with the devil. I hate the devil, and the devil hates me. And the only thing that the devil has is death. You run with him, he's going to kill you for sure. Because he doesn't have it in life. The only life that you can get in this planet is from God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Not your sex life, not your eating, not your getting high, not what you wear, not what you drive, not what you sleep in. That ain't giving you no life. Life comes from God. Life comes from within, not from without. Hey, glory to God. I was telling the brother yesterday, you know, some people, uh, I, was, I was talking to a young man not long ago. He said, oh, I'm so in love with my wife, my, my woman. I'm just so in love with her. And I just go, I want to be with her. And I don't want to live without her. I said, oh, God, help him. <laughs> help this brother. I love Sister Osa, but I can, if she acts a fool and leave me, I'll be all right after a while. Maybe not the first day, but I'm going to get there because... I love God more than I love anything and anybody. I love God. And in and, and, and America, this romance stuff where folks are so in love with somebody, you better watch that stuff. You better learn to love God more than you love that man. You better learn to love God more than you love that woman. You better learn to love God more than you love sex, more than you love food. You better put God first place in your life because if you love God the way God want to be loved, then they can't run the okie doke on you. God will show you the okie doke and he'll show you who's trying to run a game on you and you drop them boogers and stay with God. You may bleed a little while, but not long. God's going to heal you. Help them hands right there and say, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm right today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for God. How do I get all that out of this first round? For God. Who? God. What did he do? He so. Not just love, but so. I love that word, S-O, so. It's a short two-letter word, but it's a long, it's a big word, so. It didn't say for God love, but he so love. Loved us so much. That he, that he gave his only begotten son. I'm going to stick a pen right there, brother and sister. Do you not know that the creator of the universe became a flesh and blood man for the express purpose of becoming your sin sacrifice? When they whipped Jesus, when they beat Jesus, when they pulled the flesh from Jesus' bones, and put the crown of thorns on his head and spit in his face and nailed him to the cross. He was doing all that for you and for me because all of us were, were born in sin and all of us deserve hell fire. But Jesus was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement. Of our peace was up on him, and by his stripes we're healed. They, Jesus became sin in your place. I said he became sin in your place. He died on that cross. But on the third day morning, God the Father raised him from the dead. And he's alive right now. And everybody who has repented of their sins and accepted Jesus as your Savior, you're no longer dead in sin. You, you're not a sinner anymore. You are now a saint of God. And it's about time you started acting like a saint of God. And you had nothing to do. You had nothing to do with becoming a sinner. Adam made you a sinner. And you had nothing to do with becoming a saint. Jesus made you a saint. Who you walking with? Are you walking with the first man, Adam? Or are you walking with the second one, Jesus? I don't know who you working with, but I'm in Jesus today. Jesus is my rock. 
and my salvation. Jesus is the strength of my life. Jesus is my shepherd. Jesus is everything to me on today. That's why I can stand here and look at some of you mean-faced folks and let y'all know you ain't scaring nobody up in here. I'm going to preach whether you like it or not, glory to God, because I believe God. Anybody believe Jesus died? Anybody believe he shed his blood? Anybody believe he got up on the third day morning? Anybody got him in your heart? Well, give him a praise in here. Give God glory in here. Verse 17. Oh, God help me. Verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. See, some of y'all feel condemned. I don't feel condemned. Oh, I did some things I should not have done before I got saved. I've done some things that I should not have done since I've been saved. But I got a blood bath. <laughs> the blood of Jesus washed my sins away and forgave me and God don't even bring it up anymore y'all can try to bring it up but God doesn't even bring it up anymore it's as if I never done a thing I am saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost, free from sin, dead to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ my Lord, and I don't feel guilty. I'm guilt free. Not only did he forgive me, he set me free from shame and guilt. Glory be to God. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I've been regenerated by the Holy Ghost. I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ. I'm a part of the very body of Christ. And I've been authorized to use the name Jesus. What you talking about around here? The devil can't fade me. He can't bind me because greater is he that's inside of me than the devil that's in the world. Same thing for you, but some of y'all just don't know it yet. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. You better get around here and begin to know in the name of Jesus, you are more than a conqueror through his blood. Give God a praise. Well, I'm right today. I want everybody to read verse 17. Read. Everybody read verse 17. Read. He didn't come to condemn you. That's what the devil does. What does God want? God wants you to be saved and he wants you to be full of and led by the Holy Ghost. Say amen to that. I'm not going to read it, but you know in John 14, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to come to you. And he came on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, God poured the Holy Ghost out. For everybody to get baptized in, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. If you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, you need to pray till you get it. But you need to baptism the Holy Ghost with the, with the evidence of power and speaking in tongues. I know a lot of so-called theologians in America that they fight tongues. I ain't thinking about them. Well, tongues came on me. I didn't ask for tongues. Tongue came and got me. I thought I was having a bad reaction to some bad weed or something. Y'all laughing. I'm not lying neither. I'm not lying. I thought, what is, what's this right here? Took over my tongue. And some take your tongue over. It's got power, brother. And as I was, and I can see it now. I was in a little apartment over on Jefferson. Over Jefferson, Jefferson. I can see it now over on Jefferson near uh, uh, La, La Brea, but not La Brea, Los Angeles. And I was on my knees. I was just praying. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And all of a sudden, what the, what the world is? <laughs> I mean, dear God, I was raised in a Baptist church, Pine Bluff Baptist Church. Pine Bluff Baptist Church, Pittsburgh, Texas, is where I was reared in the church. They didn't speak in tongues. And when folk got happy, they got stiff. 
and they drag them out of there. They drag them out of there. <laughs> I said, well, they drag them folk out of there. You know what I'm talking about? But here I was on my knees that got involved with the sanctified church. Thank God for the hole in this church. Someone said, thank God for the hole in this church. By the way, let me tell you, you are in a hole in this church. This is a sanctified church. A tongue-talking church. We'll dance on you if you don't watch us. But we got the Holy Ghost up in here. Say, am I right? I trust that you've enjoyed the Word of God that you've heard thus far. And before we go off the air today, just in case, there's one person who's viewing the broadcast today who's not saved. And you may recognize that it's time for you to give your heart to God. You're sick and tired of the way you're living. You tried drugs and sex and money, and you may be successful in life in many other ways, but inside you, you know that it's time for you to give your heart to God. It's time for you to open your heart and allow Jesus to save you. And if I'm talking to you, open your mouth and say, Heavenly Father, that's right. Say, Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner, but I do believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I do believe he suffered and bled and died on the cross for my sins. And I believe he arose from the dead on the third day. I now repent of all of my sins. And I open my heart and I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my Savior. Open your mouth and say, save me, Jesus. Now, friends, if you believe that prayer, you know that Christ is coming to your heart. There's a number on the screen. Call that number. Let them know that you have accepted Christ as Savior so we can send some information to you that will help you get started right as a Christian. Also, if you view the broadcast and you are blessed by what Osa and I are attempting to do, we need two things from you. We need your prayer support and your financial support. Would you please uh, get the address uh, from the screen or call the number and let them know that you'd like to use that credit card today mm -hmm. and plant a financial seed. Again, this is Bishop Ron C. Hill and my wife Osa L. Hill saying to you, we love you and we'll be seeing you next time. Be blessed. We are financially supporting Food for Your Soul television broadcasts. Together, we can change lives. Your support will allow us to reach the world with the good news that Jesus saves. You can give online at loveandunity.org. Click the Give button, and it will take you to our secure page where you'll have the option to give by credit card, debit card, or bank account. You can set up a one-time or reoccurring gift by linking your preferred payment method. You can also text a gift by texting the amount you desire to 310-507-1181 or mail to P.O. Box 5449, Compton, California, 90224. Thank you in advance for your support.